Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of CUDA Crash Course, we're going to be talking about something slightly different that's still related to writing code for GPUs, but isn't necessarily CUDA. And uh, with that, we're talking about OpenACC, right? So uh, OpenACC, as it says here, is a uh, user-driven, direct, uh, directive-based, uh, performance-portable, parallel programming model designed for scientists and engineers interested in porting their codes to a wide variety of heterogeneous HPC hardware platforms and architectures with less programming effort than required uh, with a low level model. All right, so that's a lot of text. What does that actually mean? So what that actually means is that, you know, when we're writing our code, a lot of time we're spending, you know, a fair bit of our time tuning to a particular architecture. Um, and, you know, especially if we want to say go between, you know, here's my code written for uh, an NVIDIA GPU. Well, what if, you know, maybe alternative I want to run it on say you know an AMD GPU or let's say I want to run it on you know Intel comes out with the new GPU I want to run it on that maybe some other platform maybe I want to run it on uh, paralyzed on a CPU instead but I don't want to have to rewrite my code completely every single time right and that's what this uh, that's what OpenACC is really there to solve so in this example we're gonna be showing this off with an example that we've, sh we've seen in numerous times in the past which is with matrix multiplication Right, and so we can see that how we can basically automatically generate our uh, our own kernels you know, based upon you know just some pragmas, right? Some compiler directives. Um, so for this, we're not going to be using uh, NVCC. We're actually going to be using um, a PGI compiler, right? And so uh, you know this is free to download, so feel free to check out uh, PGI compilers. Um, so I'll be using PGC++, right? So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get started. And let's look at the code to begin with. All right, so here's our code. It'll look very similar to the code that we've seen in the past with a couple differences, right? So, you know, simple init function for matrix, and then here's our main function. Uh, and we're only going to have a main function. We don't need to define a kernel in here. Uh, and that gets done automatically with these uh, uh, directives, right, these pragmas. So the first thing we do is we just allocate some memory, you know, A, B, and C. And then we go ahead and initialize these matrices. Right. So uh, then we get to what our kernel is, right? And so what I mean by our kernel is uh, I, I've gone ahead and I've written out what would be if we got rid of all of these, you know, um, these pragmas in here. Uh, we basically just have normal sequential matrix multiplication, right? Um, so what is the difference here? What do these pragmas do? Now, uh, what these pragmas do is uh, first it's out of pragma. It tells us what's going to be offloaded to, say, an accelerator. Right, and that's what this kernel says. So we do pragma ACC kernels, right? And that says anything within this block right here, this is going to be offloaded to the GPU. Uh, likewise, we have these two copies here, right? So we have one of these is copy in, and the other one is just copy, right? Right, and so, you know, what are these for? Right, so uh, over here, this copy in, this just says, okay, well, I want to copy in a of this size, right? So we give it a start and a range, right? And B of this size, this, uh, this copy and a range. And I want this to go over to the device, right? So it's basically our memory copy, right? And this copy over here, uh, this says, okay, I want you to both copy this in and at the end of this block, right? So at the end of these brackets right here, uh, it will go ahead and automatically both copy it in right at the start and copy it out at the end, right? So we don't need to spend all of our time, you know, allocating memory again, um, you know, even something with, you know, using say CUDA malloc manage, it's fairly simple, you know, but with this, we don't even need to have another API call, right? All we did up here was just call new, right? So we just allocated as we normally would, right? And then, so the, so again, this copy in says only, it basically just does the CUDA uh, mem copy uh, into the device. Right, and then copy says it does the copy in and copy out. Right, uh, then we get to our loops itself, right? So if we want to parallelize these loops, we have to say, you know, if these loops are independent or not, right? So if they're independent, we want to go ahead and say independent, right? So uh, in normal matrix multiplication, our two outer loops are completely independent, right? And that means that, you know, they can be updated in any order. It doesn't matter which row, column, pair that we're uh, computing at a time, right? So these loops are independent of each other. Now, um, now this inner loop is a little bit tricky, right? And so over here, we've got this float uh, sum equals zero, and then we have this sum being updated, right, by uh, these values. So the naive way to handle this is to just say, okay, well, 
make this all sequential because of these because of the dependencies on updating sum. Uh, but it turns out that you know this kind of operation, you know, if we think about what's really going on here, it doesn't matter which order we add to sum, right? And so you know this is something that actually has parallelism as well, even if there, uh, even though it appears like there's some dependencies. Uh, but you know this is actually a very common operation. This is called a reduction, right? And so we're basically taking um, all of these different additions, and we can say, you know, we can we can give the compiler the freedom to rearrange it, you know, as it so pleases, right? Because we know that, you know, each of these additions, you know, it's associative, so the additions can be moved around. So a plus b is the same thing as b plus a. So uh, we can go ahead and do pragma acc loop independent, but we can also say what the operation is going to be. So we can say it's a reduction, a reduction's addition, and what is the variable that we're reducing into? It's going to be sum, right? So uh, with that, we've got a fully parallelized uh, kernel, right? So uh, with this, this will go ahead and get offloaded to the device. All the mem copies will happen automatically, and it will execute on the device. Okay, so let's see how do we actually compile this, right? And we'll go over a lot of these flags. Um, so I've got that up here. So again, like I said, we're going to be using uh, we're going to be using uh, PG uh, C++, which again is a PGI compiler. Right, and so the first thing is uh, this dash ACC flag right here. So this dash, dash ACC just enables OpenACC directives. Uh, the next thing we have is this dash TA, right? So if we go ahead and look in the manual, right, to what dash TA is, right? So here is our dash TA, right? So this uh, TA defines uh, an accelerator target. Right, and there's a number of options that we have here uh, as far as accelerator targets go. Right, so uh, you know, in this case, uh, you know, it, we can specify a compute capability. Right, so in this case, we're we we're go ahead and saying, okay, you're going to be accelerating on an NVIDIA GPU with compute capability 60. Right, so we can give it very specific um, information about the architecture so that you know it really knows well what is the limits and how should I be um, you know, accelerating this uh, particular kernel, right? So different architectures with all different features and the, you know, as we've already talked about in previous episodes, we should really be, uh, really be thinking about what architecture it is uh, and which, you know, what optimizations are available to us, right? Uh, so we can go ahead and specify that. Now, just as some, you know, extra, um, you know, fun parts in here, we can have this dash M info over here. Now, uh, what this dash m info does is it just you know displays the invocations of the compiler, assembler, and linker, but does not execute them, right? And so this is just to kind of give us you know a clue of what's going on when we actually run the compiler. So let's see what actually happens. So go ahead and press enter, right? And it, we can see what it's doing. So it goes ahead and it generates a uh, you know a copy for a and c, and then a copy or rather a copy in of a, a copy for C, and then a copy in for B, right? So it's go, going ahead and generating our copy ins and our copy outs for us. So it sees that we've given two things, um, saying that loop is paralyzable, right? And then it starts generating code, right? And it starts talking about things like loop gangs, right? Vector four, vector 32, talking about block ID X and thread ID X, right? And then it go ahead, you know, goes ahead and sees that, you know, if loops are parallelizable or not, right? And so what we're left with is, you know, binary. And if we go ahead and call, you know, cu object dump on this and say dump the SAS uh, on matrix mull, right, to something like out, you know, dot ASM, right? We see that it's actually generated, you know, code for us, right? So uh, this function here called, you know, main 38 GPU, so it doesn't have a pretty function like a kernel name like we'd normally see, but that's because it was generated by the compiler. Right, and so we see that it's generated this entire kernel for us to do matrix uh, multiplication, right? And so we can actually run this, right? And we'll go ahead and run it with uh, the profiler. So I'll run it with nvprof and then matrix mul, right? And so we can go ahead and zoom in on this, right? And so we see we get, you know, uh, you know. So here's our actual kernel itself. Here's our mem copies, right? We see we've got, you know you know, to do a 1024 by 1024 matrix multiplication, right? It took about 25 milliseconds. So we got a fairly high performance uh, kernel 
you know, not writing any GPU code at all, right? So, you know, we're able to basically take sequential matrix multiplication, which the key here is that it's very easy and it's very portable, right? And so it's able to, you know, generate, you know, good code for us just with, you know, the help of some understanding some pragmas and understanding where the independence is between loop iterations, right? And so that's the, that's the key point of, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, this video is just kind of showing off the basics of using OpenACC uh, and running it on NVIDIA GPUs. As always, um, feel free to check out, you know, any of the code that we have on this series at github.com slash coffee before arch. So that's where we host all of this code. All right, so if we go ahead and go to uh, this main page, we've got CUDA programming, right? So this is going to be under miscellaneous in OpenACC. Uh, and later in the future, we'll actually do some performance comparisons between you know, how well we write our code versus, you know, what we get uh, from this automatic parallelization with something like OpenACC. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.